how important is it to know your ketone number? Okay, that's a really good question because I like, when I first started teaching fasting to my patients, I really like to know the ketone number to keep everybody safe. So if you are pre-diabetic or diabetic, the ketone number is very important because we don't want your ketones to go above 7.0. Once your ketones are above 7.0, you are in danger land. Now, prior to fasting, one of the challenges that we had was that when we said ketosis, everybody screamed. And when the ketogenic diet, when fasting came around and people were like, you want to get some ketones, all the doctors were like, no, 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 you don't want ketones. But once again, again, the nuance was really important. So we started to say nutritional ketosis. We, ketosis. we want you in nutritional ketosis. So 0.5 to, I like, 0.5 to 5.0 is the sweet spot for, for nutritional ketosis. I think most people are thriving. Their mental clarity is, clarity is up. Their hunger is down when they are around 1.0. So if you're not pre-diabetic, if you're not diabetic, then knowing your ketone number is not very important. And the last thing I want you to do is spend money on a piece of equipment that you're never going to use. But if you're pre-diabetic and diabetic, we need you to know where you are with your ketones. Now, I do, I have fi- found over the years that when people see that they get into that 0.5 and above, they're now into ketosis, it's very motivating and they want to keep going. So if you're needing motivation, then the ketone number becomes important. And my favorite ketone reader is called Keto Mojo. I will leave links in this video. I will leave links on my podcast for it in the notes. But Keto Mojo is is incredible and a great one. So when I personally work with a patient, what I do is I have them get a continuous glucose monitor for the back of their arm so we can really look at what their food is doing. And then I get a ketone reader so we can see in the fasted state how well this fat-burning energy system is working. So... If if you if you're motivated and you're not pre-diabetic or diabetic, you may not need to spend the extra money. Okay. Let's go back to my metabolic switch. So when we are eating, we are raising our blood sugar up and down. We call this we call this the sugar burner system. Within the sugar burner system, one of the major cellular processes is a pathway called mTOR. mTOR is a pathway of growth. So you can grow muscle. This is why we keep talking about protein. This is why in Eat Like a Girl, I have so many protein uh, recipes, whether you are in a state of, if you're a plant-based or omnivore, my chefs did an incredible giving you protein-rich foods. But mTOR is really important for building muscle. But too much mTOR, where there's too much glucose, can actually make it so that you gain weight. Remember, we talked earlier about the excess. And it can also feed tumors if you're eating the wrong foods. So we don't want to be an mTOR all the time. So when we switch over into the fat-burning energy system, the longer we stay there, we are switching into autophagy. Autophagy is the opposite of mTOR. Autophagy is where we are breaking things down. We are breaking down things that no longer serve us. So when your blood sugar comes down and it's been down enough and there have been no nutrients coming in, your body triggers this autophagy state. And that autophagy state now is one where you're getting rid of the bad. The name of the health game is to have times when you're building the good, which is mTOR, and making sure that you're dipping into times where you're stimulating autophagy to get rid of the bad. Autophagy typically kicks in around 17 to 72 hours of fasting. What will pull you out of autophagy more than your blood sugar is nutrients. So one of the things that we know is if you get a lot of amino acids coming in from protein, you can pull yourself out of autophagy and you head back into mTOR. 
But you may not, when you're over here in the fasted state, you actually may still be in ketosis because in order to burn fat, that is the state of ketosis. So when I metabolically switch over into the fat burning system, I am metabolically switching into the ketogenic energy system. And as long as I don't raise my blood sugar too much, usually too much is about 10 points, I can stay in ketosis. But if I bring in like people who do like, here's a perfect example. I see people who will start to do bone broth and they stay in ketosis because it keeps their blood sugar stable. So their, their body doesn't register to move back into the sugar burner system. And so, but it has so many amino acids and protein in it that it flips them out of autophagy and they go into mTOR. So there are two stiff, different autophagy and ketosis are two different mechanisms that happen in the fat burning state. But autophagy, you will flip yourself out of autophagy when the nutrient load goes high. This is why, again, I'm not really in the longer fads, fast, a big fan of, of too many supplements.